Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. Heavyweight hedge fund is using mind-bending math to invest in Bitcoin. I thought this was really interesting because, you know, I have a background in computer software engineering and so I'm always interested in learning about people that are using algorithms or uh, in this case, as they described it, mind-bending math in order to make investments with cryptocurrency. So I wanted to share this with you. The other things that we're going to take a look at today, um, we're going to go with these five different articles. We'll go in this order. The first article we're going to talk about is analysts predict Ethereum 2.0 staking will trigger a bull run. We're going to look at a new law that threatens Puerto Rico's status as a crypto tax haven. Ripple is suing YouTube. Mining difficulty might reach an all-time high before Bitcoin halving. And heavyweight hedge fund uses mind-bending math to invest in Bitcoin. This will be the final article and it will round up our video today. So watch the whole video from beginning to end. We're going to have a great video for you. So should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? Well, we're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. That's what our channel is all about. Can we get 99 likes on this video? Smash that like button. It makes a huge difference for promoting our channel and letting people know that we're out there because the algorithms love it when you click the like button. So I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. Rather, this is my opinion. Um, the current cryptocurrency price is $6,946 and right now it is April 22nd, 2020 at 6.50 a.m. Currently the market's in the green. We're seeing a 1.89% increase over the last 24 hours. Hopefully this number will go up dramatically. Hopefully the price will go up dramatically today. That would be a great thing to have happen. As you can see, the rest of the cryptocurrency market is in the green for the most part. We have a few outliers uh, that are showing some losses, but overall not very many. So analysts predict Ethereum 2.0 staking are, is going to trigger a bull run. So when the first phase of Ethereum 2.0 due to launch within months, some analysts and experts believe it could trigger a bull run and transform finance as we know it. While that may be wishful thinking, he's on firmer ground when he suggests that staking could drive an Ether supply shock. Cochrane believes that dependable staking rewards of 3 to 5% will attract capital from large investors until around 30% of the total supply is locked up. ETH's forthcoming burn mechanism will contribute to the diminishing supply on the markets. And so, I don't know if you're aware of this, but when Ethereum 2.0 rolls out in a few months, Ethereum will go from a mining opportunity to what's called a staking opportunity. And staking simply means that you deposit a certain amount of Ethereum or greater than that amount and that amount has not been decided or at least it hasn't the last time I did any research on it. Um, it sounded like it was going to be somewhere around two thousand, three thousand, four thousand dollars but there were also uh, people talking about it could be as high as ten thousand dollars. So until they actually firm up that information uh, it's hard to tell how much you actually would have to lock up and when I say lock up, it's not really, it's not locked up for a specific period of time, but rather you put it into a specific type of smart contract. And while you have your Ethereum under that smart contract, you'll earn three to 5%. I've heard reports that they're even considering something as high as 8%. But until, again, until that uh, Ethereum 2.0 rolls out, it's hard to say what percentage they're actually going to land on. And as long as people are getting that percentage consistently, <clears throat> the author of this article is convinced that it's that uh, interest income that's a consistent interest income is going to uh, be very, very interesting to people, especially if we see any kind of economic crisis over the next 12 months or the next two years. It will, it will be <coughs> very attractive 
to a large variety of investors and they'll start investing in Ethereum instead of putting money into bank CDs or other types of investments. The other point that he makes is that, excuse me, is that um, with no stop gaps, well, the other point that he makes is that it's it now very easy to invest in Ethereum. Back in 2017, 2016, and prior to that, uh, you had a limited number of exchanges where you could transfer money from a bank account into uh, Ethereum cryptocurrency. And today it's much, much easier. There's lots and lots of options. Everything from uh, Coinbase to Binance to many other uh, exchanges, uh, as well as there's a lot of places where you can actually use credit cards in order to invest in cryptocurrency. And so he says, with no gap this time around, that means these users can all FOMO, fear of missing out at the same time. All it takes is one crazy MSNBC headline about Ethereum growth to remind them about their Coinbase account and the retail investors create a flurry. So it'll be interesting to see how all this plays out. I think that Ethereum 2.0 has the opportunity to do exactly what he says uh, here, and that's transform finance in a significant way, especially since Ethereum tends to drive most of the uh, digital currency finance applications. So let's take a look at this new law that's gonna threaten Puerto Rico's status as a crypto tax haven. A lot of people have moved there, <clears throat> moved to Puerto Rico just because Puerto Rico is a tax haven when it comes to capital gains tax. You don't have to pay income tax on capital gains as long as you follow, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> as long as you follow their rules and regulations. Now, Governor Vasquez has increased the yearly fee to qualify for such incentives from $300 to $5,000, and that's annual. That's crazy. Local tax consultants say the new fees will dissuade new crypto investment on the island given the current state of the market. Last week, Governor Wanda Vasquez signed into law the 4020 Act into effect, which made a key change to the rules that govern tax incentives for new residents. Previously, investors who moved to the island and applied for these incentives were required to pay an annual fee of $300 for the privilege. The new law increases that fee to $5,000. According to GeoTax, the total cost of moving to the island to save on taxes includes a $750 filing fee, $5,000 special fund fee once approved, and a $10,000 yearly donation split in two plus $5,000 new annual fee. Now the $10,000 donation fee has been on the books for several years now. I don't know exactly how long, but this was on the books prior to the change in the law. The $750 filing fee is the same case, but it sounds like this $5,000 fund fee and the $5,000 yearly fee are brand new because the previous yearly fee used to be 300 bucks. That's a big jump for people. <clears throat> it's these tax incentives that have brought entrepreneurs from across various industries, including cryptocurrency, to the U.S. Commonwealth. Co-founder of EOS Alliance Block One, Brock Pierce, and gold proponent and Bitcoin skeptic Peter Schiff, for example, make Puerto Rico their home for at least half the year. Now, it's not just about people who are enthusiasts of cryptocurrency that have moved to Puerto Rico, but it's anybody who's doing any kind of investing where a good portion of their income is coming from uh, capital gains of some sort, where they're buying stock and selling the stock or buying something and selling that something in order to make money and they're making their living that way. Well, with these changes, people who are trying to move to Puerto Rico to reduce their uh, capital gains tax this becomes advantageous to a smaller group of people. You got to be making a lot more money before you're going to say, hey, I'm willing to pay $15,000 every year just to avoid income tax. So if you're not showing a significant profit, that $15,000 a year 
is a lot more than what you might have paid in capital gains tax wherever you're currently located. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Ripple is suing YouTube. Wow. Today, we are taking legal action against YouTube to prompt an industry-wide behavior change and set the expectation of accountability. The company announced on its website adding that YouTube and other big technology and social media platforms must be held accountable for not implementing sufficient processes for fighting scams. The lawsuit demands that YouTube must be more aggressive and proactive in identifying scams before they're posted, must remove scams once they're identified, and must not profit from these scams. Ripple claims that YouTube's deliberate and inexplicable failure to address a pervasive and injurious fraud occurring on its platform has resulted in millions of XRP valued at hundreds of thousands of dollars being taken from the victims of fraudulent XRP giveaways. It also states, <coughs> excuse me, though that the exact number of defrauded people can't be known, but the scope of the harm is vast. It adds that YouTube has the means to stop the scam, even highlighting its tools and abilities to identify and remove fraudulent content, but refuses to do so. The lawsuit states that Ripple sent hundreds of takedown notices since November of 2019. Now, YouTube has responded with saying, we take abuse on our platform seriously and take action quickly when we detect violations of our policies, such as scams or impersonation, a YouTube spokesperson told Crypto News. According to YouTube, in quarter four of 2019, they removed over 3 million videos and terminated 1.8 million accounts for violating our policies on spam, scams, and other deceptive practices, while Ripple has used established processes for removing content that infringes on trademarks successfully. <clears throat> so ultimately, what we're talking about here is that, that XRP has kind of had enough with trying to work with YouTube to get some of these scams taken down, and so they're suing YouTube in order to get better action, more consistent action. Now, I know in the recent last four weeks, well, even, even during Christmas of 2019, we saw a lot of cryptocurrency channels getting taken off of the market. The channels were completely taken down. Some of them were restored, but there's some that are still trying to fight YouTube to get back live. And I don't know, but I wonder if any of those channels being taken down had anything to do with YouTube's policies on spams, scams, and other deceptive practices. Now, I've watched many of these channels and, and were personally a YouTube consumer of those channels, um, that were take, of, of many of them that were taken down, and none of the ones that I'm aware of were involved in scams or spam but I wonder if there's something in the YouTube algorithms and that that has something to do with why something got triggered and they got taken down. So I don't actually know. I'm just trying to guess here as to why YouTube has been so aggressive on cryptocurrency channels. Mining difficulty might reach an all-time high before the Bitcoin halving. Uh, BTC mining difficulty just saw its biggest rise in six months and it's estimated it'll reach an all-time high in two weeks. Also, though it dropped significantly in March, it now seems that it may be back on the road to its all-time high. As of now, BTC mining difficulty is expected to go up another 8%, in which case it would reach a new all-time high of 17.29 terahash. According to major Bitcoin mining pool BTC com estimations, however, this forecast will change depending on changes in the hash rate, the computational power of the Bitcoin network. Should it increase further, the mining difficulty will follow. The average hash rate stands at 114.0 EHS, uh, and it's that's the highest since mid March, and so. The hash rate is a measure of how many miners are actually on the network at a particular moment in time. <laughs> Excuse me. 
And so I think it's very interesting that that even though we had this great big drop in the uh, price of Bitcoin in March, that drop naturally caused uh, many of the miners to go offline. It looks like they're turning their machines back online just before the Bitcoin halving. So it'll be interesting to see how many of them continue to stay online even after their rewards are cut in half. So it's hard to say if if the miners have planned to keep these miners, uh, these uh, Bitcoin miners on for a short period of time, or if they're planning on keeping them on even after the halvening has occurred. Um, so time will tell. It'll be interesting to see. And one of the reasons why people feel so strongly about seeing a bull run because of the Bitcoin halvening is because one of the things that drives the price uh, is the miners who are selling their Bitcoin in order to pay bills. So the miners mine Bitcoin, they make Bitcoin and create new Bitcoin, but in order for them to pay for electricity or pay for whatever building they have the miners in and pay other expenses, they need to sell their Bitcoin um, in order to pay those bills. And so by them selling the Bitcoin, that puts a certain amount of Bitcoin out in the market that they're trading on exchanges. Well, by the, the having cut the rewards in half for the Bitcoin miners, then that forces them to be selling less because they're actually getting less. And so that has a tendency to reduce the amount of selling on the network. And so that allows the price to go up. So it's, it's going to be an interesting thing. I'm very bullish on Bitcoin, but you guys already knew that. That's my opinion. Now, this is the article about the hedge fund that's using mind-bending math. Bitcoin, the asset class, received some heavyweight hedge fund validation last week when a re regulatory filing revealed New York-based Renaissance Technologies is considering including cash-settled Bitcoin futures among the instruments it trades. Still, it's interesting to hear how trading experts think a firm like Renaissance might approach Bitcoin as an underlying asset given the hedge fund's reputation for using mind-bending math to identify patterns and anomalies across a universe of assets. Uh, Prize-winning mathematicians James Simone began Renaissance technology originally called uh, monometrics in Long Island Strip Mall in 1978. Renaissance is now famous for pioneering data science and machine learning before these disciplines went mainstream and has been described as having the best physics mathematics department in the world. Renaissance can make predictions based on pure time series data and they don't necessarily have to have a strong economic rationale for why a signal works or doesn't work, said Bonin. In fact, such an approach might be quite appropriate for Bitcoin at the stage that it is, because it's sometimes very difficult to make sense of the moves in the Bitcoin market. So that's really true. I mean, you'll see Bitcoin skyrocket up and you'll see it drop down, and it may have absolutely nothing to do with what you see in the news. And sometimes it's really difficult to try and understand, well, why did it go up or why did it go down? And so I guess they are seeing it as more as what can we do just with price volume data because a lot of their strategies don't require new alternative data sets, he said. And so this could be very exciting, especially if they give more information about how they're using mind-bending math in order to trigger signals to invest or sell, to buy or sell Bitcoin and other assets. And so I'm going to be watching this closely. And if I see anything interesting, I will bring it up again. In the meantime, how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions or thoughts? Is there something that I didn't uh, explain very well? Or maybe you disagree with what I said or disagree with the, what the author said? Please leave your comments and suggestions below. I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, like, subscribe, and hodl. And I hope that you have a fantastic day.